Hi Aries, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your December 1st to the 15th, 2021 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into the safe and loving space. Let's let the bulls sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Aries, December 1st to the 15th, 2021, Aries. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels. And spirit guides, angels, and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels, and spirit guides, angels, and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels, and spirit guides, angels, and spirit guides, show me clearly. At the bottom is our rooted self, the left hand side is our inner self, the middle, our heart, our emotional self, the right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the star, which is Aquarius energy, and we have justice, which is Libra energy. So if we have Aquarius or Libra within our natal chart, that comes through very powerfully at our root, and that part of our personality will be making a lot of the root decisions for us just as if we have these within our lives Aquarius or or Libra we're going to find that these people affect us at a root level we have the eight of wands and we have the seven of wands I like that countdown you know eight to seven and both still in the wands family so there's the sense of everything moving quickly and needing to know when to defend ourselves and when not to like when these people aren't worth it you know and then moves us to our emotional self we have the eight of swords we have the eight of wands again and we have the three of pentacles so the repeat of the number eight three times this is really showing us that that we're going to take everything really seriously during this time and we have to kind of step back from that energy because we can lose we can lose the fun of it all we really can we then have the seven of pentacles so we have the repeat of the number seven seven shows us that you know if we say something people will take it seriously no matter if we mean it seriously or not and if we do little white lies like little stretchings of the truth one might say people will be like well that's not that's not true so we have to be very mindful of that we're also going to be deeply intrigued with the spiritual with the esoteric then we have the eight of cups so another eight coming in this is now four eights so the foundation of us really during this time is really serious we're walking away from something we don't love anymore a new doorway is opening itself up to us and the seven of pentacles is like be patient be patient as you walk through that doorway as you see yourself embracing a different avenue of success and power and instincts and self than you had thought of before now let's look at the energy we need to be mindful of angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly 
This is Aquarius energy, the star. Now, we're going to be really attracted to dreamers and we're really going to be aligned with our own dreams. Now, I would never be the one to say, don't embrace your dreams, but this is going to be a time where our dreams can feel more like reality than reality itself. So just be mindful of that. Also, with being attracted to these dreamers, I mean, that's always going to be a good thing, but we also have to realize that their dreams might not work and might not move forward the way that we thought they would, the way that we, we hoped they would, all right? So that's going to be something very powerful here. It's kind of like if we've come into something at the ground level, the way that it's progressing forward might not be the way that we thought it would progress forward. This moves us to our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Oh, goodness. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides. And it's balance. This is the this is the root chakra and it's finding balance within ourselves. It's finding balance within our lives. We're going to find that at the root of us, at the very core center of us, we want that balance. We want that harmony. Both Aquarius energy and Libra energy, both the star and, and justice are all about that balance within our lives. And we're really looking at that. And that's going to be something that's intrinsically important to us. Now let's talk about the astrological aspect of this time before we dive really into the tarot. And we also get to see where astrology and, and the tarot collide here. Okay. So on the 1st of December, Neptune goes direct, which means that it comes out of retrograde. Now we're very drawn to this time and we're very drawn to our spiritual and psychological transformation this has been a time of spiritual and and psychological transformation for us we're also brought into great contact with our hidden spiritual gifts and a hidden side of ourselves that needs to be moved forward so this is a time of realization and this is a time where we can feel things happening all at once and we kind of want to fight against it and so we're going to have a bit of a war just starting off in December, just this, our own personal sense of how do I embrace what I need. On the 4th of December, Mercury is opposite Lilith, which can really lead to miscommunication and frustrations. We're also going to have a tendency to feel unseen and unheard, which can make us really want vindication from others during this time. And we have to be aware of this, not to let others define ourselves, but to have us define ourselves, to have us move forward and see our own worth. Also on the 4th of December, we have the new moon. We we have the new moon and the new moon is also going to bring us a, a um, solar eclipse. There we go. So that will all be in a separate video. On the 6th of December, Mars is sextile Pluto. Now we always have to pay attention when Mars comes into the conversation because we're ruled by Mars. So on these days, we feel things a lot more intensely than on other days. So this is a tremendously driven time for us. It makes us very capable at achieving our goals and going after what we want, but it also makes us very single-minded and only goal-focused. And as as we can see by the repeat of the number eight four times we're going to have a tendency to let work or let our drive just override everything else now we can become frustrated when people don't see things our way but everybody is going to become frustrated when people don't see things their way so this can be a time where we don't feel like we're really being heard and we can feel as if the power and the force that we're moving forward with this momentum of determination and and drive isn't being utilized the way that we want it to so stepping back and knowing that we're more than just what we create or what we produce on this day is going to be really beneficial for us on the 7th of december mercury is squared neptune now now here is a time when being in the normal world just being in the normal waking world almost se seems off it feels as if we need to go deeper. We need to go deeper into our imagination. We need to go deeper into our creativity. We need to go deeper into our spiritual self. And we're going to find that we have a lot of resistance to just the normal mundane waking world. So being aware of that and also knowing that we can feel rather under accomplished because we'll see all the dreams that we have. We see all that, you know, spirit has laid out for us and it can also become overwhelming communication can be jumbled during this time so we have to give ourselves some slack because everybody's going to be a little bit more in their own heads than than normal on the 8th of december mars is squared jupiter now this alignment is rather positive 
and it gives us this beautiful creative energy, enthusiasm, strength, courage, and sensuality. We need to make sure that we stay in alignment with ourselves and our energy because if we don't, we have this creative energy just kind of falls apart. We also need to have a creative or physical outlet for all this energy that's coming in or else we're going to feel kind of like we've just drunk too much coffee and we're a little jittery all day. It's like it makes us feel like we're too we're too wound up. So this would be a great day for a massage. This would be a great day for breathing exercises. Yeah, just for a centering of ourselves. And I'm just going to take a sip of tea. <coughs> Excuse me. On the 11th of December, Mercury is sextile Jupiter. Now, what this means is that this is a time for questioning and curiosity. We are open-minded, non-judgmental. We really want to acquire knowledge for the sake of knowledge and to see how it will be useful to us as, as time goes on. People might think, well, why are you looking at this or why are you curious about this? But it's going to be something very beautiful for us. It's just this sense of acquiring knowledge. We are also going to find that this is a great day for taking trips, you know, because Mercury rules short travel and Jupiter lo rules long trips. So we're going to find that this is a great day to explore and to question. Also on the 11th of December, we have Venus conjunct Pluto. Now this is going to come through rather strongly for us because at our root we have Libra energy. Libra is ruled by Venus. So this brings love and karmic love into the forefront of our minds today. We have to be aware of our hearts and our heart chakras as turmoil and undealt with issues and scars make their way to our, to the surface and can knock us off our game. So just being really aware of our hearts becomes the game changer here. On the 12th of December, the sun is squared Neptune. Now, we are going to be forced to see and to call out the weaknesses within ourselves. And when we start, we need to also stand in our own strength because we can kind of rip ourselves down on this day. So we have to be very mindful of this. This is a day of finding our voice, of realizing our self-worth, of not shrinking away when it just seems like it would be easier to hide away. We're going to be sensitive and caring and should not forget about self-care and self-love because we're going to think, oh, I should be doing this for everybody else, but we need to be doing it for ourselves. On the 13th of December, Mercury is entering into Capricorn. Now this makes us astoundingly methodical. That in the fact that we have four eights makes us really looking at things in a very kind of spreadsheet. This is the way it has to be. There's no room for, you know, going off the cusp at all. So we're going to be methodical in our thinking. We, the way that we process the world is going to be very step by step. We're almost going to have no time for laughter or jokes or joy, which is, is not going to be who we are, Aries. We can become very serious and very focused. I mean, we're represented by the god of war, right? Aries, Mars, both the names of the gods of war in in the Greek and the Roman world. But here, we're going to need to find that joy again. Make sure to step back and to you know embrace our heart and to think about things. And remember that it's not just about logic. It's not just about the bottom line. Also remember to speak kindly and with compassion because everybody's going to be so goal-oriented that we're just going to forget everything else. And the words can be a bit sharp on this day, most definitely. Also on the 13th of December, we have Mars entering into Sagittarius, which will affect us quite greatly because we are, you know, again, Mars. We were represented by Mars. This brings a maddening duality. So there's the fun-loving side of this alignment that makes us want to, you know, go and laugh and, and just have fun. And the extreme, intense, overly aggressive side that makes us think we just have to conquer it all. We just have to be kind of like top dog. So just be aware of this because we can really fall into this energy quite powerfully. We need to have a physical or spiritual outlet for all this fire that's building up within us or else we're just going to feel overwhelmed and we're going to feel like I had so much potential this day, this day but I burnt out. Like I burnt out really quickly. So again, focusing on the breath, focusing on meditation, coming into the body, even sports, like this would be a great day to go for a run. This would be a great day to do whatever it is that we like to do to just release energy. The 14th of December is Mars opposite the North Nod. Now this is a time when the intensity of Mars needs to be 
tempered by the conscious piece of the North Nod. So this is going to be really good for us because again, this is an intense day because of the Aries energy. Aries has us looking for action and doing while the North Nod brings to the surface the motivation of working out our karmic debt and to really embrace our spiritual growth. This can be an amazingly powerful time for us if we are balanced and we listen. That's why the earth, the root chakra has come up to balance us and connect us. We need to be connected with the earth. This is a time for doing, for watching, for listening, for understanding. And if we have all that come forward, we can really feel as if we settled into ourselves. Now with the star here, we're looking at our dreams. We're looking at what it is that we desire, where it is that we want to be, the bigger picture that we're going after. The star also brings us to this place of wishes, brings us to this place of balancing the the liquid as we pour it out into the world, as we as we water the grass, you know, as we water the earth, and as we pour the water back into into the river, into what it has always been, and yet it's still going to be defined within it. And so this is a time where we start to see ourselves really looking at our dreams, looking at what we want, looking at the way that we desire. And we're starting to see how that desire helps grow the grass, you know, it helps grow what we're nurturing, and also becomes part of the larger consciousness of our existence, of the way that we're moving forward, and of what we want within our lives. It moves us to justice. It moves us to the sense of balance. We're looking here not to be just to everybody because that's exhausting. Somebody somewhere is going to get, you know, miffed at us along the way, but it's being balanced in our energy. It's being just to ourselves. It's moving forward in discernment, discernment of voice, discernment of idea, discernment of who we are and where we're headed. We start to be just, but we also know that that justice has to extend to ourselves as well. It brings us to the eight of wands. Everything moves really quickly. We feel this inwardly and we feel this emotionally. We can feel as if we're not on a sturdy ground as we want it to be. And that's something that we're going to need to kind of call out within ourselves during this time. Because as everything's moving really quickly, this is pretty much divinity saying, ready or not, here it comes, you know, type of deal. We're going to go to our default reaction areas, which is to fight. Because again, we are the god of war. And it's not a bad thing to be that general, to be that person who looks at the bigger picture, who you know has that steadfastness, that determination, that fire to be able to get the job done. That's really admirable. And we also have to remember that the goddess Venus and the goddess and the god Ares, they were lovers, right? So it's love and war, those two fires that come together. We also have Libra ruled by Venus. So that passion is coming forward within us. And that's how we have to balance this energy as well. So here we're going to think, I just need to act because action is going to be a little bit more commonplace for us, a little bit more like this is what I can do really well. And I don't have to think about it too much to be able to push me forward. So we're going to want to act rather than thinking things through, rather than coming back to something with a cool head, we're going to think, just charge forward, just keep going. So here we're starting to stabilize ourselves. We're going to need to see that everything isn't going to be solved by just charging full throttle ahead and that we can't fight with everyone because it starts to drain us. It overwhelms us. It doesn't have us moving forward the way that we want to. And so knowing that if we fight every fool or everybody who doesn't agree with us, we'll, we'll never stop fighting. That's when we learn to stand our ground and only fight when we need it. Only fight when, you know, it's worth something to us. It's kind of like a person who's always yelling. You don't listen to that person when they yell. But if a person who doesn't yell, then yells. You're, you turn around and you think, oh, what, what the heck's going on? I'm going to pay attention to that. That's what we're seeing here. And it moves us to the Eight of Swords. Something emotionally has us feeling trapped. It has us feeling overwhelmed. We think, I can't. I can't move forward. I can't go after what it is that I want. I can't embrace what it is that I desire. I'm trapped and I'm always going to be trapped. It can be rather nihilistic, this feeling. But what we're going to see here is that we're not trapped, is that if we listen to everybody else and if we don't fully see our surroundings, yes, We'll be trapped by the failed expectations of others. We'll be trapped by the failed expectations of ourselves. This is a sense of living towards what we aren't instead of embracing what we are. This is kind of like being ashamed all the time. And we all know people who live in the Eight of Swords energy. They just do. It's kind of like no matter what they do, they could be absolutely magnificent people. They'll just never see it. Their emotions are 
or turmoil, they, they don't move forward, they don't take those risks. And this is going to be a time where we're looking at them and saying, is this what I want to be? And we're saying no. And we're seeing ourselves changing and embracing, you know, this change rather powerfully to see how we want to move forward, to see where it is that we want to be, to see what it is that we desire from our lives and ourselves and the bigger picture that we're working towards. And as we do this emotionally, as we're coming out of like, it's not necessarily a depression, but it can be an anxiety. It can just be, we've been feeling a bit blue or the world has been just tinged in this bit of gray that has made us feel overwhelmed, that hasn't had us really connecting emotionally with ourselves. Now we start to see that I'm guarding the wealth of me, even though we might not think it's a lot. You know, here she's correct. She's creating this beautiful warmth, this blanket. And with the three of, of pentacles in this depiction, she has it guarded by her foot and by the pitcher. So she's still guarding her wealth while she creates. She has dreams above her and the mind coming together with the spider's web. The poppies in the field have her embracing her dreams, but also looking at things in a very different way. The wheat that's expanding be behind her is the wealth that comes forward as we focus on the warmth that we're building within ourselves, as we are focusing on the protection of our hearts, but also the protection of our gifts. And as we're seeing our gifts come forward, we're seeing ourselves more clearly and more openly. This is a time where revelations are going to come our way if we get out of our own way that's going to be the hardest thing it moves us to the seven of pentacles it moves us to patience we want everything yesterday why because we're human beings and that's how we are we don't want to wait we don't want to you know have to to figure everything out we like it all just to line itself up but it's when we earn something it's when we've put the blood sweat and tears into it and things start to align that it's really worth everything to us. Spirit is saying here, look at everything that you have accomplished. Look at everything that you have done. Be patient as things grow. You know, don't try to force it because that's usually when things fall apart. Move forward in my guidance and stand close with me because I'm standing close with you. And it brings us then to the Eight of Cups. We're walking away from something that we once thought we would love. This could be an ending as powerful as a divorce or a changing of jobs. This could be an ending as small as saying, you know what, I'm not going to have my parents' voice echo in my head every day as I'm getting ready. I'm not going to have those negative words come forward. It could be from our parents, it could be from our teachers, guardians, whomever it was when we were little that told us we couldn't. And now we're starting to see that we can. We're starting to see that we're breaking out of preconceived notions or expectations to really step into the power, the beauty, the insight of ourselves. The Eight of, of Cups brings an ending, but it's an ending that hasn't fit for a really long time. People might be surprised at the steps that we're taking to move ourselves forward, but here's the thing, our heart isn't surprised. Our heart is actually going to say, why did it take you so long? Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the Lord. It's ourselves getting in our own way. It's being just a little bit too rigid, saying this is the plan and this is how it has to be. We're also going to be very attracted to people who have that authority to them. We're going to like that kind of like, you know those people who argue, but it's like foreplay. That's going to be what this is like. It's like, it's going to be that we like, and it doesn't have to be sexual at all, but it's going to be that we like that bit of a challenge. We're going to find that very in intriguing. And so we have to just be mindful of getting really sucked into that because it'll start lowering our energy level, all the fighting. And that's what spirit's telling us to be really mindful of. It moves us to our subconscious chakra energy, which is clarity. This is the third eye chakra. We're starting to see ourselves and the world around us so much more clearly. We're starting to have our eyes open in a way that we just didn't have them before. And now as we're seeing ourselves, now as we're owning what we desire and want and need, this becomes a game changer. It leads us to our subconscious root itself and its strength. It's strength to weather the storms. It's the strength that's not through bodybuilding or, you know, the, the physical exertion. It's the strength of a heart that knows how to love and still loves no matter how much the world has thrown at them. It's the person who still trusts, who still laughs, even though the world tries to rip it from them. And so here, it is the beauty and the strength of the emotions, of the caring, of the compassion that becomes the game changer for us. It's also Leo energy coming forward. And then moves us to our 
in ourself, and it's the King of Swords. It's knowing our mind and it's knowing our voice. This is the Warrior King. We're not going to sit back and just let things happen, but we're going to be very mindful of who we give our energy to, who we name as being powerful in our world that needs to be kind of attacked, that needs to be, you know, shown our own power. And this is going to be a time where it's kind of like I'm not wasting my energy on things that will resolve itself or things that won't matter. But when it matters, I'm going to come at it with full force and full throttle and be absolutely victorious. The King of Swords has us cutting through doubts and fears and negativity, has us embracing the power of our voice, the power of our mind, the power of the greater insight and ideas of what we have. This is also going to be a time where we're astoundingly focused. Whatever we put our mind to, we tend to get and we tend to win. It moves us to our subconscious emotional self, which is the Three of Wands. And the Three of Wands is opening ourselves up to the adventure of a new world unfolding before us. A sense of I can instead of I can't. A sense of exploration and discovery and beauty and connection and, and power. This is a time emotionally where we're starting to see the doors open and we're starting to see us guided forward. The repeat of the number three shows us that divinity is with us and creativity is with us. Doors that were closed start to open. They really do. And it brings us to our public arena subconscious message, the world. The world starts to open to us. And we can see if we want to travel it or we can see if we want to carve out our little space within it. But this is a time where we look at the world and where we stand and we start to see power. We start to see prosperity. We start to see beauty within our lives. There's, there's elegance and eloquence here to be had as we sink our feet into the ground, as we say, I stood here, I stand here, I am powerful, and my energy will always be powerful upon this earth and the way I move forward in it. All right, Aries, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all, and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this time. Let's take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Aries. <sighs>